Hello, I am the Sultan of Graphing, and hopefully you've got some data, and you've maybe worked out some uncertainties with it, maybe on Excel, and now you need to graph it. If you're still graphing with Microsoft Excel, you need to ask yourself, you need to take a good hard look at yourself and wonder what's wrong, because uh, Excel kind of sucks when it comes to graphing. However, Logger Pro, if you have that software, is quite good. And I'm going to show you how to do some stuff with uh, plotting the data, putting in a trend line, a linear one, adding error bars, and then using those error bars to make a maximum and minimum trend line. Now you should have a spreadsheet with the data that you want to graph. I have here some data when uh, I was cutting down a block of cheese and measuring the mass and volume of it. I'm going to use the mass and volume to find the density, make a graph, and find the density from the graph of the cheese. So on my x-axis, I want to put volume. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into Logger Pro and just paste it in. Boom. And I go back to Excel. I find what I want to be on my y-axis. And I want mass. Copy that. Boom. And then it plots the points automatically because it's magic. And then I want to label what each axis is. Right now it just says x and y. So I double click on x and I want to put volume. Put the units in there as cubic centimeters. For the y-axis, that's going to be mass, and the units are grams. That now shows up on my axes. Uh, you can stretch this out if you want, uh, but I'm pretty fine with it as it is. Then you go up this button here, and you put a linear fit trend line. Boom! It's that easy. It tells the slope. It's 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. That's the density of the cheese I was working with. I need to put some error bars in this, and I had some complex error bars for the volume, which is on my x-axis, that change for every data point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these uncertainties that I would have had to calculate earlier, and I'll copy them. And now, to add some crazy error bars on Logger Pro, what you have to do is you have to put in a special uh, column. So I'm going to go up to Data and Column Options and I'm going to add a new manual column and I'm going to label that uh, unsearch of volume and give the same units as volume which is cubic centimeters and boom that shows up there and then I just paste in these values now to make them show up as error bars you go to the volume column and you double click and I'm going to go to air bar calculations and instead of making a fixed value which would be simple I'm gonna to go to use column and then that new column I made should appear Then I hit done woohoo there they are using that same method of inserting air bars I took the even easier option and I put in some vertical air bars uh, on the mass uh, axis now in reality you probably wouldn't have much uncertainty on mass if you're using electronic balance. But just for illustrating a point on these max and min error bars, I put them in. Let's say I want to add those max and min error bars. It's sort of a funny way. What you do is you go up to this button that is curve fit and you click on it. Now you get a choice of what type of line. I want it to be linear, the extra line that they add, and I want to change the fit type to manual because I want to be able to move it around. So I hit OK, and they put a line that really isn't where I want it to be. So what I do is I go up to this, and I double-click uh, the title of the line, and I enable line drag. And that lets me, obviously, drag the line around. So now I'm going to place this line and make it go through the upper left-hand corner of this box. If I pretend that these air bars make a box, then in the upper left-hand corner, I want my line to go through it. And if this lower box uh, is down here, I want my line for the maximum line to go through the lower right-hand corner. So I'm going to drag that down to there. And that is my maximum line. 
if I have a maximum line, then I should also be able to make a minimum line. So I go back up here to curve fit, change it to manual. It's already set as linear. I hit OK. Puts one in a spot where I don't want it. So I double click on the label for it. I enable line drag once again. And now I'm interested for a minimum line. If this is a box up here, the lower right hand corner of the box, and it pretty much already is there. I can maybe adjust it a little bit. And then for this box down here, I want to put the uh, minimum line through the upper left hand corner of this box. So I'm going to drag this up just a bit. And there you have it. I can uh, maybe make this look a little bit nicer by dragging some things around. And that's it. Now it is just a matter of aesthetics. You may want to change the color of the lines so they don't get mixed up. You can go to appearance. Maybe I want the top one uh, in color to be uh, purple, violet. And so that will change the color and the text here. And maybe I want to label it as the maximum line. So I can go to insert text annotation. And I can type in uh, max line. And then I can drag that, I hope, just on top of here. And I can drag this into the line as well. Then I can do the uh, similar type of thing here. Change the appearance to a fitting color for the minimum line. Maybe something like a midnight blue. It's beautiful. Okay. And then maybe I want to label this one as well. Insert another text annotation. I'm going to call this the minimum line. And you can hopefully, it's a little finicky, but you grab that and you drag it down there, and that's it.